Have you thought about your retirement plans and what you want your life to look and feel like at this stage of your life? Or maybe you have already retired and unfortunately it's not quite living up to your expectations. Either way, this video is for you. I know that many people come out of the workforce, myself kind of included, <laughs> so accustomed to working year for years, like really hard. So much so, they're so accustomed to this that they struggle to create a lifestyle that prioritizes comfort and relaxation and enjoyment of their life. In fact, I've known people that have struggled so much with this that they ended up eventually going back to work part-time. And I find this a bit heartbreaking myself. So if you are getting ready to retire, retire, I personally think that after so many years of working so hard and caring for everyone else, whether it's children or your work responsibilities, etc., it's your turn. So how do you design and create a new low stress life for yourself in a way that allows you to slow down and truly savor and enjoy it? I believe the answer to this is in a lifestyle redesign in the form of a soft life. There is so much about the sound of these two words, soft life, that really appeal to me. Now I have my own perspective on what it means to live a soft life and, and how to go about creating this. And that is what the topic of today's video is all about. <clears throat> You'll see how I am moving towards and practicing living a soft life now as I look forward to my own retirement years. And we'll talk about how you too can go about creating this for yourself. Soft life. Doesn't it just sound good? I think so. <laughs> if you could describe your ideal retirement in one to two words, what would your what would it be to you? Go ahead and drop me the first two words that come to your mind in the comments. I'd love to hear them. And while you're doing that, if you like this, this topic and um, videos that talk about things you can do today to help you live more intentionally, um, with more presence and positivity in your life, be sure to go ahead and hit the subscribe button while you're at it. As this is, that's the type of video I like to make here on my channel. So first, Let's turn to the definition of a soft life and where this concept emerged from. It's kind of surprised me. Um, if I look to the Urban Dictionary, it defines a soft life as the act of simply living a life with less stress, worry, and concern. Making better decisions that benefit your overall well-being. I also think it's important for us to give credit where the concept of a soft life actually came from. It was introduced by a group of Nigerian influencers on social media. They were inviting people to imagine what it would be like to allow more softness and more comfort into their lives. <clears throat> and it's really an act of Afrofuturism um, and it involves visualizing the ways that life can be different even wildly different in a better way. And I read a little article in LinkedIn by Yoli Maya Ye about this, and she says, quote, in this case, we are talking about life design, wealth accumulation, pleasure, and the possibility of breaking ancestral curses around the work to die model and the inheritance of slavery, end quote. So the soft life is actually a reaction against the strong black woman ideology and encourages black women to live lives that are centered around comfort, ease, and joy. And while obviously I'm not a black woman, I really find this description to be beautiful and an aspiration of a great way to live. And I intend to create my own soon to be retired life with this in mind. So to me, a soft life feels like a softer schedule, a soft relationship with my body, softer expectations for myself, a softer pace, and a physically softer environment. Now, let's talk about each of these and how you can move toward them in your 
your life today. So a softer schedule probably is a very good place for us to begin. So simply choosing to schedule less appointments and things that you have to do at a certain time on a certain day. That's a great place to start. And you know, this doesn't mean that you can't be really active and get out and do a whole lot of things. More so what I mean is allowing space in your schedule, space so that you can be flexible, that you can linger longer when you run into a friend or you can stop in and wander around a place that looks interesting without having to worry about um, getting to your next scheduled appointment. I have one friend who is retired who often is just simply exhausted and feels overwhelmed by all the volunteering work that she has committed herself to doing. Um, yeah, retirement is a great time to be able to find fulfillment and getting back and into volunteering. But I don't think you have to fill up your days when you retire. Um, when you have a softer schedule, it's going to allow you more time to be mindful and to be curious. Um, like as an example, when you're taking a walk, even though it might be that you're intent on getting your steps in, when you're actually walking, you can let go of this goal and then you intentionally open yourself up to being curious along the way. Maybe you stop and you look at anything that looks interesting or you pick up a leaf and you examine it closely or you breathe in deeply and think about how good that feels. Having a softer schedule means consciously putting less on your to daily your, your daily to-do list so that there's plenty of time to fully enjoy whatever it is you're doing. Um, a good example of this was this morning. I had decided that I wanted to give my face and my hair a little extra nurturing um, with, the, with a mask because they just both felt really dry. And I enjoy doing some of the DIY like this. And so since I hadn't overloaded my own to-do list, I sat down and I thumbed through some of the old Willow and Sage publications that I have to find some inspiration. And I also ended up deciding to do a little facial steam first because I noticed that in there um, with some dead sea salt, some dried mint, lemongrass, etc. Um, it was really nice. It opened up the pores in my face before my face mask. And by the time I got out of my shower, my skin felt so good. And I know I wouldn't have done this if my to-do list had been quite full because I'd been more concerned about marking things off the list. So I got out of the shower and my skin felt good and I felt really nurtured and nourished. And so that made me feel compelled to do some nourishing on the inside too. So I made myself a melon smoothie, which is one of my favorite um, healthy summer drinks. And um, it was just really nice. So having a softer schedule, um, you know, it, it can really open you up to having a beautiful day. If having a softer schedule feels like that is something that is easier said than done kind of thing for you, especially if you're not working full time or you're caring for a family right now, um, it might be a really good idea to ask yourself what your definition or how you define your own self-worth and does that concept of self-worth for you include a component of how busy you are in your life because for many people this is the case and I, I challenge you to really think about this question as your brain may want to tell you that that's not the case but truly how busy you are does not define your self-worth when I posed this question in my community, The Art of Intentional Living, I got some really great responses there. Um, one person said that it's the heart and the intent behind what you do and how you feel when all is said and done. Another one said that her self-worth is defined by how much kindness and compassion she shows others in her day. So I just love these. Um, we've got some wise, wonderful women in my community. If, if you're looking for something like this and you'd like to connect to others that are on a journey to being more intentional um, with 
their lives, then the link to join the community is in, in the description. You can find it there. We'd love to have you. I'm also beginning to practice a softer relationship with my body. Um, more care, more nurturing, like I described what I was doing this morning. Um, lovingly massaging in moisturizer as opposed to thinking of it as just another task that I need to do. Um, because my skin gets so dry, much more so than when I was younger. Um, more days without makeup and getting used to how I look without it. Um, intentionally smiling at my aging face in the mirror. I'm also practicing listening to my body more when it comes to eating in particular. Sometimes, you know, for me it's really hard sometimes to distinguish whether it's my body telling me that it wants a snack or whether it's my mind telling me that it does. Like, because I have been, a, I was a big snacker for many, many years. On the other hand, I am doing a better job in getting more used to tuning in to when I've eaten enough and, that, and when I'm full. And that's something I, that I didn't used to be good at at all either. And I will say that that probably is one of the most helpful things, hands down, that I did to start healing my gut. Uh, highly recommend it. Um, also, when I'm not feeling good or my mood isn't positive, I'm practicing holding myself in a place of more self-compassion. I used to just chalk up bad days to, you know, it's like, okay, it's just gonna be a bad day, I'm gonna be in a bad mood the rest of the day, and that's just the way it is, and I just wallow in it. So now I'm trying to add a bit more understanding to this while still allowing myself to feel whatever it is I'm feeling emotionally and whatever it is I'm experiencing. So softer living also feels like slowing down earlier at the end of the day, leaving space for softer, more relaxing activities in the evening like reading, journaling, watching something on TV that leaves me feeling good afterwards. I'm finding that these type of shows are getting harder to find, so if you have any good suggestions on movies or shows that fit this category that you really love, please give me some suggestions in the comments because I could really use some. Anyway, I am doing better too at going to bed when I feel tired, even if it might be a little earlier than my normal bedtime. And I think that's a really great idea. Lean into when you're tired. Go ahead and relax. Um, another thing that I mentioned was having softer expectations for yourself. Now, this doesn't necessarily mean that you need to give up on challenging goals or big dreams. Rather, for me, I'm becoming okay with things taking longer to accomplish and trying to focus more on enjoying the journey toward the goal. And when I feel like I don't get everything done on the to-do list that I've made for myself for the day, rather than trying to jam one more thing in at the end of the day like I used to, um, then I just, you know, trying to get more knocked off. Instead, I'm asking myself, how important is it really that that task get done today? And most of the time, things can wait until tomorrow or the next day. And yeah, that means I'm not accomplishing near as much uh, from a quantitative standpoint anyway than I used to. But I've noticed the quality like of my ideas and how many ideas I get, and they're, more, they're just more creative. And I'm happier and healthier, and I feel really good knowing that I am truly allowing myself to enjoy my days. So this leads right into a softer pace. So physically, not being in a hurry. For so much of my life, I used to walk fast, drive fast, eat fast, did everything fast. And I've been working on slowing all of these down to do a, have a softer, gentler pace. And some of the things that um, I'm doing now that I didn't do before, because I never felt like I had enough time to do them, um, things that are like slower activities, things like making sourdough, which takes you know more than a day, or yogurt, I'm having fun with those. And reminding myself too, to slow down when I'm visiting with my mother or friends or spending time with Kurt on the weekend. This is a place that I definitely still very much am working on 
um, really just being um, listening more deeply and patiently. And so lastly, a softer environment. It kind of reminds me of Huga. Soft lighting, candles, which I love. Soft clothes, silky sheets, soft throws. I got rid of all my high heels several years ago. And it's not that I don't like to look good, but I'm not gonna do that at the expense of comfort now. So to sum it all up, creating a softer life as you ease into retirement, if you focus on these five areas, it can help you get there. A softer schedule, a softer, softer relationship with your body, softer expectations for yourself, a softer pace, and a physically softer environment. So I hope, truly hope that you have enjoyed this video today and found it helpful to you in some way. I'd love to hear about your own retirement goals and strategies um, for what you want to do in retirement in the comments. Um, and I'd be really grateful if you liked this video, if you gave it a thumbs up and just to help it get shared with more people. And lastly, also, if you like this video, I could just recommend to you that you might also like the video that I created on how to transform your life with slow living. So I hope you have a wonderful week and thank you for watching today.